The sun still shines, the sand still hot, the water cool. But summer, as Seuss knows it, stopped. The morning the armed outsider came to this North African beach to murder in cold blood. The foreigners have fled. Well, many of them anyway. Cancellations for high season have led to layoffs among hotel staff for whom the tourists are their lifeblood. Rida, a concierge, has just come off an aimless night shift. He's sure he'll shortly lose his job. When you came to work that night, what did you talk to your, your friends and, and work about? Really nobody was in a, in a good uh, situation to talk. We sit down and uh, nothing happened between us. No conversation, no discuss. Yeah, really, we all... We, we was, because, because everybody knew. Yeah. yeah? Everybody, see, everybody realized what Yeah, we see uh, the guests leave and... Like it's a, a bad uh, dream happened to us. It was really very sad. Really, I can't, I, I can't find the word to, to explain my feelings. Rida refers to the killing spree as an accident, but he knows it wasn't. Last Friday morning after his night shift, he joined his girlfriend for a swim right in front of the massacre hotel. They'd watched events unfold in horror. Do you feel able a little bit to talk about what happened on the beach that day? No. You don't want to talk no. about it? That's okay. No. That's okay. But for you personally, yes. are you okay? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm able, yeah, yeah. I'm able to, uh, to work now and to, to continue the, the life. And uh, now I'm thinking to maybe to, to find another to work. These are dark days, but for a while it had seemed like the sun was shining on Tunisia. In 2011, Tunisians rose up in solidarity and fury after a young fruit seller from a small town in the centre of the country set himself on fire in protest over corruption and depression. They called this the Jasmine Revolution after the national flower, and it triggered a political earthquake that shook this region, toppling three dictators. Four years after the Arab Spring first blossomed here, and Tunisia stands alone in the Middle East as the one democracy to remain intact. Egypt has slipped back under authoritarian rule, Syria, Libya, Yemen, all ripped apart by civil war. And yet, after what happened here in Sousse last week, the Tunisian authorities are cracking down. They're shutting mosques, planning sweeping new anti-terror legislation and handing police new powers. People feel their hard-fought Jasmine revolution is being betrayed. Their liberal constitution threatened and free speech coming under fire. Ashraf Mrabet is one of them. He remains a political activist and today runs an EU-funded project restoring old buildings in the Sous Medina, the historical walled city. Surely, though, I asked him, after the Bardo Museum massacre in Tunis four months ago, and now this, the authorities have to do something. Tunisia is a small but ancient entity. Its 11 million people are 98% Arab and they're 99% Sunni Muslim. But ultra-conservative Salafism flourished in the newfound freedoms of the revolution. Under the dictator, beards of more than one week's growth were banned. Sefedin al-Rizgi, the gunman on the beach, was said to be a Salafist. 
but we've met many of their number here, appalled by what he did. The man in white is one of Ashraf's oldest friends. They met when Ghassim was apprenticed to his uncle, a jeweler in the souk. He now runs an internet cafe. He said his friend was caught right in the middle between democracy and Islam. Uh, yeah. Islam. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Islam is not democracy. It's like this. Islam, he said, is very different to democracy. One, the rule of the people. The other, the rule of God. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> well, seriously, Ashraf. Ashraf said, well, that's the difference between us. Hassan agreed. have to come between you, <laughs> The revolution was a blessing, Ghassim said. It gave us freedom. But the problem with democracy is that if two of us say drinking alcohol is forbidden, but three other people disagree, democracy wins. It's democracy. During Ramadan, the holy month, Muslims break their fast each day at sunset with the iftar meal. Ashraf's whole family's fasting, but devout as they are, their politics are avowedly secular. Neither Democrats nor Islamists could even exist before the dictator fell. Now, coexistence is the problem. Tunisia is facing the very same issues as the rest of us.